Welcome to our review on redox reactions. Now the first thing that we actually need to do is understand what we're actually talking about when we use the phrase redox. Now as with a lot of things in chemistry the name is quite logical and when we look at it carefully it tells us quite a bit about what's happening. So if we split redox up into two the RED there tells us that we have a reduction and the OX refers to an oxidation. So a redox reaction is one where we have both a reduction and an oxidation reaction happening at the same time. Now in terms of our simple way of understanding reduction and oxidation, we look at it in terms of oxygen. So if we are looking at an oxidation reaction, as the name suggests, it's gaining oxygen. If, however, it loses oxygen, then it's referred to as a reduction. So those of you doing the foundation paper, then that is the foundation level that we'd need for reduction and oxidation, just about the gain or loss of oxygen. So one of the best demos that we can do as a redox demo is the thermite reaction. So what we're actually doing here is we start off with aluminium and iron three oxide, and then we're gonna trigger the reaction into aluminium oxide and iron. So what we're actually doing here, if you look at the balanced equation, which is in the middle, then we start off with aluminium, with no oxygen. But in terms of our product, we've got aluminium oxide, so it's gained oxygen. So what we can say is that aluminium is oxidized because it's gained oxygen. Now, just for a little bit of a complexity, it's actually called the reducing agent. If we look at our iron oxide though, we start off with iron joined with oxygen as our reactant, and then in our product, we just have iron on its own. So the iron oxide has been reduced because it's lost oxygen. And that means it's acting as the oxidizing agent. So what we mean by reducing agent and oxidizing agent is basically its role in moving the oxygen. So an oxidizing agent is one that's going to give up the oxygen and give it to something else. Whereas a reducing agent is the one that's going to then receive the oxygen. So just remember that when we're looking at the overview here, what we have is oxygen being transferred from the iron oxide to the aluminium. So as we've already said in one of our earlier reviews, when we're talking about a half equation, that just shows the change to one reactant. So if we think about our thermite reaction and we break it down into our two half equations, we'd have a look and see what happens to aluminium and then what happens to the iron. So if we think about aluminium, first of all, we can see it starts off as an aluminium atom on the left hand side, and then it's going to become an aluminium ion on the right, the actual product. So when we're writing it, don't forget that if it's becoming an ion, we must involve electrons. So our half equation for aluminium is Al, and then our arrow, and then we've got our aluminium ion, which is Al3+, and three electrons. If we look at our iron, then we start off with the actual iron ion, which is Fe3+, and in order to change that into iron atoms, it's going to gain three electrons, which is shown by that second equation. So if we break down those two half equations into actual words to describe what's happening, then we can say that the aluminium atoms lose three electrons to become aluminium ions, and the iron ions gain three electrons to become iron atoms. So one thing we can do to really help us out with knowing whether something's an oxidation or reduction when we're talking about electrons is to remember this little acronym of oil rig. So oxidation is the loss of electrons and reduction is the gain of electrons. So when we consider our thermite reaction again, because the aluminium is losing electrons, it's oxidized because oxidation is the loss of electrons. Whereas the iron gains electrons, therefore it's reduced because reduction is the gain of electrons. So make sure that you learn that phrase oil rig and then just apply it to the scenario to identify which is being oxidized and which is being reduced. And look carefully at the question. 
because if in the exam they ask you to explain whether it's an oxidation or reduction in terms of electrons, just make sure you include it is an oxidation because it has lost electrons. And if you want to make really certain, you could include the half equation as well, just to show where the electrons are coming from. So the last thing to remember is that not all redox reactions involve oxygen. So we do have some redox reactions that have no oxygen involved whatsoever. And I've given you an example in the middle there with zinc and copper chloride. So what we actually see happening in that reaction then, our zinc is going to lose electrons to become zinc ions, which means they are oxidized because it's the loss of electrons and they are acting as a reducing agent. The copper, however, is going to gain electrons to form copper atoms. Therefore, they're being reduced and they're acting as oxidizing agents.